Hi, and welcome to University TV Presents. I'm Anna Silver, and today the topic is campus security. I have with me Rob Littrell and Greg Hahn. Why don't you guys go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us about your role here on campus. Okay, good morning, Anna. Good morning. I'm uh, Rob Littrell. I'm the Director for Security and Police Services here on campus. Uh, we're responsible for the public safety of the campus. We have eight full-time security officers and uh, a few uh, part-time. And then we have seven Boise police officers, including a lieutenant, that are assigned to the campus that work closely with my team. Awesome. And go ahead, Greg. Yeah, I'm Greg Hahn. I'm Associate Vice President for Communications and Marketing. Our office does uh, media relations, kind of com some community relations, the alumni magazine, website content and strategy, social media, video, uh, photography. We have the, the printing and graphics is now part of our realm. So we kind of do a little bit of everything on campus security. Often we're kind of that front facing, whether it's through social media or through media relations or helping kind of craft messages to students when, when we need to get the word out on things. We're kind of helping the, uh, help, helping be kind of that front face, the, the trusted source of what's happening on campus. Great. So um, I'm gonna start with kind of a hot topic here at Boise State. Um, I think this is more kind of relevant to you, Greg, and also you. <laughs> um, so on July 1st, the law was enacted that concealed weapons holders can carry here on campus in certain areas. Uh, can you elaborate on that, please? Sure, and for us, it's really not a hot topic. It's been around for a while. We've been working with a team on campus since early February. Uh, when the bill was first starting to be introduced, uh, including uh, communications and marketing, uh, other departments on campus. So we've been talking about it for a while. Uh, but basically, uh, any, any place you go in Idaho, you can assume that there's uh, con concealed carry uh, license holders out there. Uh, it's, it's been in Idaho law. Uh, what's different is we had a policy, a university policy, that uh, said there's no weapons allowed on campus. And now the state code has amended that to allow anybody that takes some enhanced training to have an enhanced uh, concealed carried weapon on campus along with retired law enforcement officers. So it allows a small select group to uh, bring their concealed uh, weapons onto campus, but they have to have that enhanced concealed carry license to be able to do so. Okay, well, thank you, Rob. And do you want to elaborate on that, Greg? Yeah, you know, you have a good handle on it because you're right, it's in certain places. It's, and like Rob said, it's the enhanced concealed weapons permit holders. There's two levels of concealed. You can have, you can go get a concealed weapons permit that kind of allows you to do certain things you still can't carry on campus. Uh, but with the enhanced training where you, I think you fire close to 100 rounds and it's a full day of training and a few other things, you can, you can get this permit. And they don't centrally track how many there are, but I know... Last uh, winter, uh, one of the reporters in Boise called all the counties and got the number, and it was about, I don't know, 1,100 total in the whole state, so we're not talking about a ton of folks. Um, but those folks can carry uh, in many places on campus, but they excluded large venues of over 1,000 people, which here at Boise State means a lot. I mean, that's, mm -hmm. that's not only Bronco or Albertson Stadium and Taco Bell, but also the sub uh, because of the rooms upstairs. Um, the uh, Donald Larson Park, a few of these other places, these sports venues. So there's a lot of folks that are a lot of places and venues. And the other place they excluded was uh, dorms and residence halls and any kind of university owned uh, residential property. So folks can't have the weapons there. So like Rob said, we got together. We started meeting <coughs> weekly, I think, way back then and started mapping out all the things that had to do. So by the time it got here, I think we all felt like you know, we were in pretty good shape. I mean, it was just at that point, just education, trying to talk to folks about um, what it really means. And it's just, a, and it, for folks on a day-to-day -day level, it's kind of not that different. If you, um, last year, this time, we wanted somebody, if they saw a weapon, to call security or call 911 because you couldn't be sure what, what that person uh, was doing and you shouldn't be responsible for finding out if they can have it legally or not. Mm -hmm. uh, and police and security will respond, that's still the case. Awesome. So you were pretty prepared for that. We were. Okay. And um, has there been any concerns, like, from students or people in the community about this? Have they voiced their opinions on that? Oh, I can answer that for sure. I mean, people, I mean, it was a big, we had faculty testifying in the legislature on both sides. 
uh, students, uh, you know, came out on both sides. Um, I would say it's probably safe to assume that most of the faculty on campus were probably against it from this, for, you know, when the legislature was talking about it. Uh, the community, like the Boise core of Boise is probably, you know, if you look at the demographics and the politics mm -hmm. of places, um, but there are certainly plenty of people around the state of Idaho that are supportive of such a thing. Um, but I think it's, that's why it was really important for us to kind of be as upfront and open about what you can do today um, and what keeps your classroom safe or what keeps you safe on campus. Because, you know, the decisions you make sort of on the day-to-day -day basis haven't, aren't really going to change. Okay. And Greg, you kind of uh, touched on this earlier. You were saying what areas of campus aren't allowed. Mm -hmm. What areas of campus are allowed? Well, I guess the rest, right? <laughs> <laughs> Classroom. I mean, that be, actually, that's a good question because the... Just one to be of, clear with it. Yeah, so. it's, you know, the outside, the quads in here. I mean, in, the, in, in, uh, in classrooms, frankly, that was one of the, one of the discussions that our, our legal folks and security team had to have with faculty across mm -hmm. campus. They said, well, this is, it's not very often that you take something away, that the faculty can't create, like, a whole slate of rules about their classroom. Unfortunately, or, you know, th what happened was the legislature s set the law, and that's, you know, obviously trumps kind of what we can do and what faculty can do. And so we provided a kind of some course, some language for, for syllabi that people could use that said, you know, you're, you know, these are, these are the rules, uh, it's concealed weapons, you have to have this permit, and just so you know, I'm, if I see a weapon, I'm going to call 911, I'm going to call security, and I encourage everybody to do the same. So it's um, kind of letting faculty at least have the discussion with their students so that everybody kind of understands what the rules are. And I mm -hmm. think probably in 99 classes out of 100, um, there's not even somebody quietly carrying a concealed weapon or more. I mean, there's not that many people, but... Um, you had to realize what the legislature said had to happen, and that was one of those things that had to happen. Mm -hmm. and and our primary, uh, we keyed on the performance venues of over a thousand seating okay. capacity. So, you know, all the, the venues that Greg mentioned, but it also includes uh, other, like the uh, the bubbles, the tennis bubbles, uh, Donna Larson, uh, Student Union, mm -hmm. and Morrison, or the I'm sorry, the Belmont Morrison Center for the oh, performance right, arts. Boaz. Was, Soccer, yeah. uh, but performance venues of uh, over a thousand seating capacity. Okay, and have you had any problems so far? Uh, from our end, we really haven't had any reports. Okay. Uh, and, and the one I, I, I forgot, resident halls too. Mm -hmm. that, that's a big one to enforce. But with all of that being said, we haven't had any reports uh, so far. Like Greg said, if anybody sees a weapon visibly you know, showing it's supposed to be concealed. Right. So you want to call either 911 or our uh, campus security substation, 426-6911. We will go check it out, and we'll ask them for their license, uh, make sure, and then remind them it's supposed to be concealed. But mm -hmm. we haven't had uh, a lot of reports like that uh, uh, since the law went into effect. That's good to hear. And are there any um, extra measures you're taking to reassure students that they are safe here on campus? You know, it's kind of like what Greg says. Uh, everything we've been doing up to this point is still legitimate. Mm -hmm. So we put out an annual security report that has all our crime statistics. We just published it uh, at the beginning of this month. It's on the security website, which has a lot of other uh, good resources. It has frequently asked questions about the gun law. So just about everything you can ask me is in that uh, frequently asked question list. Mm -hmm. So we encourage students, faculty, and staff to go look at that. Um, and then, you know, just have that awareness. When you're walking around campus, you'll see it all the time. Uh, people have their heads down. Right. You know, they're, they're not looking for the bikers, the longboarders. It's have that situation awareness as you're moving around the campus that something's going on. And if you see anything suspicious, you want to report it. We'll go check everything out mm -hmm. that... Uh, it's called in 426-6911. If it's a threat right away, you know, to life or property, we want you to call 911. But if you call 426-6911, we'll send either a security officer or a police officer to go check it out. And, and then, there's more. I mean, uh, Rob can talk more about this, but the care teams, the yes. dean of students, we're, we have a whole system kind of in place to get ahead of some of these issues. So even if you know someone who might be talking in a certain way that makes you, ner you know, worry about that. I mean, it's a good friend and you're kind of not really sure. I mean, you, uh, most of these incidences, they've happened around the country. There's usually one or two moments where somebody could have probably 
gotten ahead of it, it's hard to kind of overcome that kind of bystander yeah, nature, the, the, but I think that's one thing that's pretty important. And the care team is one of the best things the campus has going on. We have a great care team. The CARE stands for Crisis Assessment Resources and Education. So we know that we're getting out to faculty and staff. Students are still trying to uh, make them aware of CARE. Student Affairs has a program that, they're, that you know, they will be promoting it heavily uh, in the, the near future. But CARE is the, it's the best mitigation tool the campus has going. It's a very professional team. It's made up departments across campus counselors, dean of students, uh, Boise police, security. We have security analysts that works for the campus. So if you see somebody that's starting to worry you, uh, faculty, staff, or students, mm -hmm. you go to the care site, care.boisestate.edu, and you put in a care report. And then it's like a triage type system. So mm -hmm. sometimes you're, the issue you're having with somebody in faculty or staff or students, it's a, it's a human resources problem. So it's sent to the HR office. But if it's, you know, it could, can be considered a threat, there is a threat assessment team that's part of CARE, um, not just to focus on that part. The R and the E of CARE stands for resources and education. So we try to get counseling support. Uh, Dean of Students Office will check on students, you know, how you doing, mm -hmm. get them the help they need. But what we're trying to do there is keep uh, something from escalating into where it becomes that situation where it becomes mm -hmm. dangerous. So CARE is a, it's one of the best tools we have on campus. We're not in that response mode where we're waiting for something to happen. We're right. actually preventing things from happening with the CARE team. They right. meet weekly, mm -hmm. but if they have some other things going on where there's somebody we're worried about, they, they will set up special meetings. It's a very engaged process that I think is one of the best things that Boise State has going on as a best practice. Well, it sounds like you have a lot in place to be prepared. Um, but I just, I do want to touch on in the, you know, a moment, if something does come about like an emergency, what kind of precautions do you have in place? Well, we have seven Boise police officers assigned mm -hmm. to campus, and they're going to get here pretty quick. Uh, we had a robbery, uh, not a robbery, but uh, somebody stole some stuff out of the bookstore uh, a couple semesters ago, and Boise police was on scene in two minutes, mm -hmm. uh, it captured the, the person that was running away. Having them right here on campus assigned with us, it, it, you're going to get a pretty quick response. But for the student, uh, we do have resources on our website. You go to the security website, mm -hmm. and there's checklists. Uh, our active shooter uh, domestic violence uh, type uh, program is called Run, Hide, and Fight. Mm -hmm. And so it's a simple checklist, but we want you to get away from anything that's happening if you can. If you can't, then you want to uh, kind of shelter in place, find a room where you can lock or you can barricade. And then finally, you know, uh, you know, engage whoever's doing the bad stuff. But we'd rather you do those first two actions first. But there's a whole bunch of more materials on the website that talks about what to do for a bad situation. Having that situational awareness, though, that something's going on and then reporting it is mm -hmm. going to be the single best thing you can do because that's going to get help on the way. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, as the Bronco Alert Administrator, I want everybody to sign up for Bronco Alert. Our goal is to get an emergency notification out to the campus within minutes if anything's happening on campus. So uh, currently with students, we have about a 28% opt-in rate, which means they won't get a phone message, they won't get mm -hmm. a text message, and text messaging is the single best uh, way to sign up for a Bronco Alert. Uh, all you will get from a Bronco Alert if you haven't signed up for it is an email Mm -hmm. And that's not going to do you any good in a urgent situation where you need to get that emergency notification mm -hmm. quick. And Greg, is there anything in place to like advertise for that Bronco alert so students know that they can opt in for that? We try to get it in front of as many people as possible. We have we a but <laughs> <laughs> any any time we kind of sneak it out to to students, we're doing that. We're, we've got it all over the. Yeah, they're, the they're web, but my Boise State, I think they plug it up. Top. Uh, Rob's always out there at orientate. I mean, he starts with 17-year-olds uh, and their parents and hits them hard from the beginning. So. <laughs> yeah, and it, they have a uh, how to sign up for Bronco Alert right on the home page down at the bottom where the mm -hmm. icon-based. Uh, uh, it, 
Yes, we, we, we try to. And we're looking at other ways to uh, try to raise that number. I, I did a study with the uh, nursing college a couple semesters ago, and the high number of not opting in is down at the freshman level. Mm -hmm. By the time you become a senior, it's actually a fairly good opt-in rate, mm -hmm. but it's that, you know, learning all the things to do for public safety on the campus. You know, and one other thing too is, you know, public safety, it's kind of all of our jobs and it's an individual preparedness thing at the, the base level, you know, where you're taking care of yourself. But if you see something suspicious on campus or around the campus, call it in so we can mm -hmm. check it out. So, I mean, if you see something that doesn't look right, call it in, we'll go and check it out. That, that also helps keep the, you know, anytime we get reports from custodians, students, transportation, the folks that are out there and they know how things are supposed to look and it, it doesn't look right, they call in, we check it out and there's, there's typically something to it, so. Okay, awesome. So I'm gonna change over a little bit to a different topic. Uh, this year, there were 50 metal detectors installed, I believe, at Albertson Stadium. And so I've heard rumors that they don't work. I just want you guys to clarify that a little bit. <laughs> well, from the start, I can talk about that. You know, so obviously the, the guns on campus law spurred things along uh, on, on, the, uh, on that decision. But if you look around, I've been to, um, I was up in Seattle for a Sounders game and they had the metal detecting wands. I know that all the NFL stadiums are going to metal detection. All of the Major League Baseball stadiums are going to metal detection. So it's kind of a best practice mm -hmm. that's Really, um, you know, the security's been increased and increased and increased at not just at Albertson Stadium, but all over the country. And mm -hmm. for, for reasons that, you know, uh, for obvious reasons, I guess, Boston Marathon being one of them. I mean, this is one of these places where you have a lot of people and you want to do what you can to keep the students and the athletes and the fans safe. Um, we said from the start, we were going to mm -hmm. roll it out. You know, everybody, we actually visited uh, some of the folks who were putting this together over in athletics and facilities and security went to Seattle to see how they did it, the Mariners, uh, how the Mariners did it. They've talked to a bunch of other, both universities and to, um, to, to professional uh, teams. And they said, don't try and do it all at once, whatever you do, mm -hmm. because even if you get them all there, and we weren't even sure we were going to get, I mean, we ordered them and kind of weren't sure when they were going to arrive. Uh, we, they, we got them all in place. We set them up. Their plan was to roll it out over the first few games. So that first day, I, I, I assume, and I don't know what their actual tactical plans were, but they had, st they had said, we can't do everything all at once. Mm -hmm. uh, you have a baseline of what we've always done, which was visual IDs and bag checks and that sort of thing. So you're never kind of stepping below a security level that existed and then sort of easing into the new one. And then just by the, you know, they were feeling really good. At it. Uh, that first game was a little rough. The second game was uh, getting the word out about people showing up early, which is important, because if you all show up at the same time, it's never going to, mm -hmm. you know, there are going to be lines. That's kind of how it works. Uh, and people listen, you know. That, I was blown away. I went in about 45 minutes before that second home game and went up to uh, the press box in the Sky Center and looked over, and the student section is absolutely full. <laughs> so that was really great to see uh, people kind of wanting to kind of do what they can to make things easy. I was a little worried at last Friday's game, because it was 6 o'clock right, right after work, and People would want to, uh, and actually that one kind of self-regulated too, because I think there were people who got to the game and didn't get enough tailgate time, <laughs> so they didn't care if they missed the kickoff. They wanted to hang out at their at their vans and trucks that they've spent so much money on in the tailgate area, which is fine. So that never kind of turned into. So it's, some of it's just learning how the process works. I mean, I think they were always going to roll it out. They were going to be flexible um, and make sure that. Uh, that they understood how it worked, they, understood, they could follow along with what the, the, the ebbs and flows of the lines and understand the equipment. Um, it was kind of the, the plan from the start to get it all squared away by the end of the season. Yeah, and there's a certain amount of assessing and evaluating that go on in each game, and they've done a great job. I mean, uh, the plan includes uh, certain things like having somebody that's not involved in the, uh, the walkthrough and the wanding, and they're there just to assess how we doing, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, you know, uh, Mike Sumter, who is one of the leads on the program, his whole philosophy from the get-go was put yourself into the fan experience. And what we don't want to do is impact that fan experience. We still want it to be, you know, this, this outstanding Bronco. We want to go to the games. Uh, so to have as little impact as possible. And they've done some amazing things. You know, like if you see normally going through uh, gate N, 
and the line is backing up on that gate, uh, they'll go out and they'll reach fans and they'll move them to another gate that doesn't have as much. Mm -hmm. So they've done a really good job. But the whole thing is a security practice. Is This is another thing, like the CARE program. It is a best practices. Boise State is ahead of the game on this. We've been doing increased security uh, for a few years now. So everything from doing, we do pregame sweeps where we bring in federal agents. We bring in the 101st Civil Support Team, uh, Boise Police, Bomb Dogs, and we do a total sweep of the stadium. So that way we know, you know, once we open those gates up, that the, the fans, the athletes are safe, you know, from mm -hmm. the get-go, somebody will have to bring whatever they're trying to bring in through the gates. So the metal detectors are another enhancement to come up to best practices that uh, big event stadiums are doing across the U.S. I mean, we are, we're right up there with, uh, you know, best practices. And you look at events like the, the Boston Marathon, mm -hmm. and we have to take measures like this. Our whole goal, uh, we have a command post, we have a full team uh, for public safety during games. Our whole goal is to keep that a safe experience for athletes, fans uh, during game day. Yeah, and we knew it was going to be a, I mean, every time you change, certainly the entry procedure was going to be a little bit of a mess for a while. It actually worked a lot smoother. I mean, we, I think they kept a lot of us up late at night thinking this big change was going to happen. <laughs> and we finally show up for that. You know, we, there, was a, there were about 50 people who were not overly excited about the first home game. We were like, <laughs> let's get this thing. Let's hope that it works. And it was, but the fans have been great. Um, the you staff know, has been The staff great, is amazing. Work, the, map, you know. the, the, the folks, you know, you have to, we have to work with contractors to kind of pull this thing off. Uh, I think everybody's done it. And it's, it's heartening. You watch the families in there, and there's a ton of little kids. I mean, you want those folks to be able to show up to that thing. Um, and know that they're in it for four hours of fun, and that's the goal. Well, that's really reassuring, especially um, I didn't know that you did a sweep of the whole stadium beforehand. And we make do sure other it's things, too. Completely <laughs> secure, and then, you know, the metal detectors, of course. That's, I'm sure that's really reassuring for other students yeah, as well. It's so. part of a total package, mm -hmm. and it's really where, it's, you know, all of our big events need to go uh, to ensure that we're safe. Awesome. And... Are they installed anywhere else on campus, or are they planning to install them anywhere else? Uh, we're looking at it. You know, like Greg said, we're still assessing the whole process of her metal detectors. But currently at Taco Bell, it's wanding, although they may. No, they're still wanding. Mm -hmm. But we may, we may expand as we go on. We're still learning. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, this was a big effort this, mm -hmm. this season. Um, Morrison Center is a little bit uh, less hands-on. Mm -hmm. uh, but it depends on what's going on. You know, if it's a uh, event that may be high threat, you know, we'll, we will adapt to whatever's going on campus. Yeah, the, some of the, you know, Taco Bell was a little ahead of the game because some of the traveling, <laughs> big procedures. they would get, um, you know, whoever it was, some big singer or country star or pop singer, and they have rule. They were like, okay, you have to be weapons free. It has to be this level of security. So they were kind of ahead of where the rest of the university was. So. So last month, there were multiple cases of a prowler entering homes um, near the university. And this is concerning a lot of students because um, it's happened, I believe, a couple different times to the same home, um, several homes in the same area. Um, what kind of procedures have you been going through each time that's been happening? Okay, I, I, several. Uh, we, we, we have had a couple incidents and uh, so as far as the procedures here on campus we've increased our uh, security patrols mm -hmm. and uh, you know Boise Police has an active investigation going on uh, so we've increased our uh, patrols on campus to the south part and we're reporting anything we see or receive any type of information we receive to Boise Police um, you know it, as far as the incidents themselves you know, the primary thing you need to do is lock your doors and windows. Okay, all of these uh, incidents have involved uh, where it's easy access to get into these. And, you know, I, the first thing I want to say is lock your doors and windows. The second thing is, once again, just like we talked about before, is increase your situational awareness. If you're walking, you know, from the south part of the campus to your, your home off campus, uh, you know, if you can walk in pairs, that's a good thing. If you need security escort, you can call 426-6911. Uh, we'll give you escort. 
but just to have a general awareness of what's going on. Uh, if you look at our annual security report, you'll see that we don't have a lot of crimes like this, but Boise Police is, you know, they're taking this one personal. Mm -hmm. They're very engaged in investigation, and we're providing them with whatever information we have to help them in that investigation. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. And I'd say, you know, one of the reasons that it's, you know, we send, I mean, there are, there are federal, federal laws regarding how you, how you deal with certain crimes, but it's also about, I mean, we'll, we send those emails, sometimes in the middle of the night, I get, you know, I have to sleep timely by my, my phone, and so does Rob, because of, you know, always, we'll send a timely warning to the folks on campus, the staff and the faculty, as well as the students. But that's to kind of, really to try and resolve this thing as best we could. One, it's about safety, it's about, okay, this, uh, we, that's why the timely warning system exists. It's, mm -hmm. It's a sort of a heightened level you get around university campuses that obviously people don't get anywhere else. You're not going to get a, I live in the North End and the city doesn't call me up when there's a report of something going on in our neighborhood. But it's, it's really important to us, I think, to make sure that we're always uh, as upfront mm -hmm. and, and uh, giving people, and that's why those things end with, you know, a page and a half of, uh, of tips because, you know, every time you hear that somebody didn't lock their door again, you have to say, okay, come on, guys, let's all lock our doors for a while and, and, and take care of this. Yeah, and those tips are geared towards the new resident, you know, somebody that's been living with their parents for a while, and now they have their own home. You know, if you come from small town Idaho or mm -hmm. California, and you may not lock your doors, mm -hmm. this area, lock your doors and windows. And then if you see anything suspicious, report it. So I, I'm kind of sounding like a broken record, but we will go out and check anything. I mean, we've had several calls since the original lurker incident, and we go out and we check every one of them. You can tell that uh, folks are, are, are hypersensitive right now, mm -hmm. um, but we go out and we'll check everything that's called in. The more information you give us, the sooner you call in is better. I mean, two hours after something happens, it's, it's a little bit more difficult. But call us, either 911 or 426 911 and we'll go check it out. Okay. And have you had, um, you know, questions from the public, people calling in, just asking about details a lot? Primarily media. Right. I mean, just not a lot outside of media. No, uh, we did. You did have an event, we, which was yeah, really we, nice and we well-attended event. We did have uh, Student Affairs and uh, Campus Security sponsored a forum. Uh, about a week and a half ago, mm -hmm. where we invited the uh, students, uh, particularly that residents, to come in, and then we gave them some uh, safety tip presentations and talked about kind of the same things we're talking about today. But uh, wh what I found useful for that is, you know, as we took questions, you know, you're taking notes, okay, well, maybe we're not doing the best job of advertising that our annual security report or the 426-6911 number so we got, I think we got just as much out of that as the uh, student population uh, that attended. It, it, I think it was uh, good for us and good for the students. Yeah. And uh, we had students from that area that were in the forum too. So, and just, you know, student affairs is also doing things with those students mm -hmm. too, uh, meaning they're, you know, they're being taken care of by student affairs. Mm -hmm. Greg, do you want to elaborate on that? Uh, well, I would just say it was nice to see I kind of stood in the back. Um, I think it was a good event. It was nice to kind of give folks a chance to ask, not just Rob, but our, uh, the, the police partners were there, um, the dean of students was there. Um, I think that's, you know, set a good example for campus. I mean, you get this, obviously it's something everybody's talking about, but there's a lot of questions, as you know, hanging out there. So the more we can do to get the word out, the better. And it was kind of, I think it, uh, I think it was nice to see. There were a lot of student support from ASBSU. They all, they kind of came in support of the, of the student efforts. Yeah, so. I think we'll try to do that earlier in the semester uh, from now on as offer something mm -hmm. like that, uh, safety tips, you know, how to stay safe in the, on the campus in the surrounding areas. But I, I do want to go back to the annual safety report again. <laughs> Check our numbers. We really are a safe campus. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of good to have this hypersensitivity, you know, to reporting things because that's what we want you to do. But at the same time, I don't want anybody to overly panic we really are a safe campus, safe neighborhood. Mm -hmm. um, you know. Yeah, I actually did look over that an annual security report and I was really surprised, you know, there weren't a lot of sev severe crimes on there. So that was kind of reassuring. Um, but I just wanted to ask about the blue poles uh, placed blue around campus. Poems, yes. 
Yeah, do you want to tell me a little more about those? Sure, we got about, I think there's about 43, 44 of them, and they're typically placed in locations where if you're at one, you can see the next one. Mm -hmm. Now, we need to get some more on the south side of the campus and some other locations. We actually got a couple location suggestions mm -hmm. from students during the forum. But those, uh, you push the black button, that's going to get you 426-6911, which is our security substation. Mm -hmm. If you push the red button, it's going to get 911. And it keeps an open line, so if all you can do is just push the button, we're going to go check that location out, both from downtown, uh, the, night, uh, the county 911, mm -hmm. or our security substation. Well, great. Um, so that's actually all the time we have for today. I want to thank you both so much for coming here. Do you have any uh, quick things that you want to add just extra that I didn't cover if you see something report it 426-6911 uh, sign up for Bronco alert because if something does happen that's how we're going to get the emergency notification out Greg's mm -hmm. going to help us with social media mm -hmm. so hashtag Boise State will be your fact-based credible source of information during an incident and then that's about all I have. Yeah, lock your doors. Lock your doors. <laughs> <laughs> well, great. Thank you so much, Rob and right, Greg. Right. And thank you for tuning in to University TV Presents. I'm Anna Silver. And until next time, we're tuning out today. <laughs>